So for those of you who don't know me, my name is Stephanie. I sew all the time. I've been making my own clothes for the past three years about to varying success. And I really wanted to capture this next project that I'm going to be working on because it's probably the most complicated thing that I have tackled. Um, and that is this here Japanese coat. So it is a duffel coat that I found in a Japanese sewing pattern book. I do not speak Japanese, so that'll be interesting. Here is the pattern that I will be using to make my coat. I am so, so excited about it. I have been thinking about making a coat for a long time. So this is the coating fabric that I am going to be using. It's a wool blend cashmere that I got from, yes, Beautiful Textiles. It actually had a bunch of other coating fabrics, this same exact coating fabric in different, like 30 different colors. As you can probably see, it's orange. It's very orange. <laughs> I just love orange so much. My Animal Crossing character is just constantly like buying just the orange thing in, in every outfit, so. This is some Bemberg lining fabric. This is the Pro Weft Supreme Medium Fusible Interfacing. So here are a few swatches that I got before I ended up buying the fabric that I did. This is the one that I got the orange. I also looked at this one and this gold color which is really pretty but I thought it would get dirty uh, really quickly and then this really lovely kind of teal forest green color which I that was probably my second favorite I almost got it in this color so these are the buttons that I picked and I also got these from Stone Mountain these are some real horn like antler Toggles. Um, I think these I got on Etsy from a store, I can't remember where. And then some leather strips here for the little toggle straps. If you're trying to translate a Japanese sewing pattern or any other language, I recommend downloading the Google Translate app to your phone. You can use your camera then to scan images and it'll automatically translate all the text on the page for you. Of course, it's not always perfect and you end up with some really wacky looking translations sometimes. For example, Google Translate seems to translate the word lining as the back. I also used a Japanese sewing terms glossary from japanesesewingbooks.com so I didn't have to rely exclusively on Google Translate. And of course, I think you just use a bit of common sense and the diagrams help a lot. When we get to my pattern, D4, the instructions are a bit sparse. All the instructions are right here at the bottom, but they're mostly referencing steps explained elsewhere in the book. What I do really like is the cutting layouts here. They indicate exactly where the seam allowance needs to be added for each piece. I've already gone ahead and traced off my pattern pieces and added the indicated seam allowance. You can also see that several pattern pieces have the seam allowance included already. In this case, the sleeve lining and the pocket pieces. So you don't have to add any seam allowance for those particular pieces. Okay, so here is the muslin that I made. I was really, really excited to make a coat from a Japanese sewing book because it is drafted for a much smaller woman. And for this, I did not have to make any changes. I'm gonna steam everything first to try to shrink it, and then I'm gonna cut everything out and hopefully get started. So, definitely not nervous. <laughs> Anyway, this is going to take a while, so I'm going to listen to my book and cut all of this out.
Now I'm just fusing all of my fusible interfacing to my pattern pieces. You can see very clearly indicated on the pattern where the fusible interfacing needs to be added. Now that I have fused my interfacing, I am ready to transfer my markings onto my fabric. I'm just doing this using Taylor's Tacks. You always want to add Taylor's Tacks after you do your fusible interfacing or you won't be able to pull that thread out later. Okay, so now I have finished um, putting in my Taylor's Tacks and I am going to put in this um, cotton tape. This is what I'm using for stay tape. The pattern says to use diffusable, but this is what I have and I've seen some tailoring videos where people use it, so I am going to use this. The seam allowance here is one centimeter, so I am going to be stitching this cotton tape in place at slightly more than one centimeter. This allows for the turn of cloth, especially with thick fabric like this coating. Now I'm just using the iron to gently pull on this cotton stay tape until it creates a nice curve. So I'm using the steam setting and just kind of steaming this into place until the curve roughly matches the curve of the garment. Then I just hand stitch my twill tape to my coat just barely catching the layers of the coat underneath. So, so much time has passed, um, and it's very dark in here now, um, and I have finally gotten to the point where I'm actually about to use my sewing machine. I've been working on this project for, um, well, many, many hours now, uh, several days, <laughs> um, and I'm finally going to stitch something. So I've just decided I want to finish my seam allowances with the serger. Even though everything's going to be enclosed, I just don't want anything unraveling on the inside. Ideally, you would finish all of your seam allowances before you started stitching the whole coat together, but, you know, this works. One sewing tool I really recommend is this clapper. I really like it for how flat it can get your seam allowances, especially bulky seam allowances like on this coat. It's also really good at pressing open the seam allowances on a sleeve or a collar, anything like that. So this is usually the part where I walk up to Anthony and I'm like, pretend it's done. Pretend it's done. So. We're trying to stun. Um, not quite. I just wanted to show you what I did last night, which was I did this hand stitching on one of the side seams. So I have just stitched the, the seam allowance of the side seams down using a herringbone stitch or a catch stitch. And it's it just keeps this seam really flat and from the outside you really don't see it at all because I'm not stitching all the way through the coat I'm just stitching through um, I'm just catching like the least bit of fabric that I can so I think the next thing on my steps here is to do the patch pockets um, which I am a little nervous about just because I've changed up the construction of those pockets a little bit so that I can put my hand in on the side. So I'm going to see how that goes. So I've just attached the lining to the pockets the same way my instructions have told me to do, so I haven't changed anything yet. The next step, I am going to be attaching my extra lining piece. I've also creased the top of the pocket where indicated by the pattern and left an area unstitched here so I can turn the whole thing out later. This lining piece I drafted is the same as the other pocket piece, but it's about two centimeters taller. 
I have pressed the top edge of the new lining piece down by one centimeter to the wrong side. Now I will stack the two lining pieces so they are right sides together, then flip the pocket right side down so you make a little sandwich, then pin and stitch all the way around. So yay, good news, the pockets worked. Um, the way that I constructed them seems like it worked out just fine. This is, of course, the side that will be facing the coat, um, and this is the part that I need to sort of hand stitch closed. And then this part, I will have to stitch to the coat as well. Not exactly sure. I might have to do that by hand. It might be a little bit hard to get to once I um, top stitch the coat down. And of course, I'm gonna leave this part not stitched to the coat so that my hand can get in there. I forgot to mention that before I attach my pockets, I did a little bit of top stitching right where I'm going to have that opening in the side of the pocket. That way I can see where to stop stitching, and then when you're done, it looks like there's top stitching all the way around the pocket. So I went ahead and attached my pocket, and as you can see, maybe you can, there's, this is the lining that's on the inside, and it's a little bit hard to get to, but I'm going to try to just top stitch that down um, as far as I can. I probably can't sew all the way to the ends, so I'll have to come back in and um, hand stitch that closed. Okay, so not bad. I was able to stitch through um, most of that. I think there's just about like half an inch right here that I'll have to come back in and hand stitch closed. Then we attach the pocket flap right above, trim down that seam allowance, and then top stitch it down. Okay, so my pockets are attached. I'm really happy with them. I love that I can just put my hands in here um, when I'm cold instead of having to like do this weird situation, which is always a little bit uncomfortable, I think. Um, so, yay! I'm really glad that worked. I was not exactly sure um, exactly how, like the order of construction to make it work, but I'm super happy. Okay, so I have gone ahead and stitched my yoke. I am going to use these little pattern pieces. This is the yoke pattern piece without the seam allowance. And I'm gonna use that to help me iron the yoke so that I get that really nice curve. After a very awkward pinning experience in which I really wish that I had a dress form, I decide to baste the yoke in place so I don't have to worry about the yoke shifting out of place or any of the pins getting in the way. And then comes top stitching the yoke into place. Top stitching is really not one of my favorite things to do. I always seem to mess it up the first time and have to painstakingly rip out all those stitches and try it again. I think this time I got it on the second try. So that's the yoke all sewn on. There's the back. So my pattern tells me that next I'm supposed to make the sleeve tabs and then attach them to the sleeves.
After attaching the sleeve tab, I pre-pressed up the hem of the sleeve, so I'll have that crease in advance. Then I just stitch up the sides of the sleeves. Attaching the sleeves is a whole thing, so I'm going to save that for next time. Thanks for coming with me on this week's episode of Sewing a Wool Coat in My Hot Apartment. If you ever had delusions that sewing was a delicate and graceful art, I hope you are now aware that it is in fact a sweaty, chaotic business, mostly done while wearing pajamas. In part two, I'm going to go over attaching the sleeves and hood, making the lining, and all the finishing touches on this coat. See you next time!